I want to welcome everybody here today. I am delighted to see such a full room. Welcome all you members of the press and my supporters. I really appreciate your being here. And, and citizens who came out of interest or curiosity, welcome to you. Everybody is welcome and thanks. Well, when someone speaks about posterity or those who come after us, these images are vague and they don't really conjure up much of anything. And they certainly don't touch our hearts. And for us Americans, that's been pretty much okay. Because while we have invested to some degree in the future generations, for the most part, we Americans have had the luxury of being able to just focus on building our own good lives. And in that process, we built a great nation. And we could just assume that our children and grandchildren would be able to lead even better lives than we had. Until now, we didn't really have to think much about future generations and what lay in store for them while we went about our business. Well, now all that has changed. And we face some decisions that are absolutely urgent. And these decisions are really more about our children and grandchildren than they are about us. And if we fail to take their best interests, their vital interests to heart, then we will be guilty of one of the worst moral defects, an indifference to the suffering of innocence. And that's why I'm here today. I am trying to make vivid and palpable just all that is at stake here. And I'm trying to help the citizens of our district to feel in their hearts what it means when they go to the polls in November to choose between Mark Obenshain and me. Let me introduce you to my two granddaughters. Please meet Dahlia and Leora. These are the two little girls that I first introduced back in March at my first press conference when I launched my candidacy. These are the little ones that I feel so moved to protect. I mean, look at these sweet faces. <laughs> I mean, don't you just... I mean, they look so open to all that life has to offer them. And I cannot stand to think of them suffering needlessly because we just couldn't get it together to do what needed to be done to address the climate crisis. It just pains me. So I have to give my best to protect them. And that is really what this challenge of climate change is all about. And here's what the experts have to say about the kind of world that these little girls and millions of, like, millions of others like them, what the world will be like for them if we fail to address this crisis. The world that these little ones and millions of other children will live in will be a place that is much more unstable, where there will be much more warfare if we don't act. The Pentagon itself calls climate change a threat multiplier. By that they mean climate change makes all the other dangers more dangerous. The experts tell us that if we don't act, food and fresh water could well become scarce in the world that these children grow up in if we don't act. And the less we attend to this gathering crisis of climate, the more the sea levels will rise, the swamping cities along Virginia's coast and along coastlines throughout the world. The extreme, unpredictable weather that we are starting to see is going to become much more severe and much more frequent. The list goes on. In moral terms, we have really quite a simple choice to make. Will we follow the golden rule or will we not? For it is by our actions or our inactions that we are doing unto them. Just as surely as if we were to gather these little ones into our arms to protect them or push them off into onrushing danger. The golden rule requires us to ask this question. If we were in their position and if we were depending on the people in our position to protect us to keep our vital interest in mind, 
How would we want them to protect us? How would we want them to do unto us? Would we want them to do unto us as Mark Obenshain is consistently doing in serving the short-term profit interests of his corporate sponsors at the expense of all these little children who are depending on us to protect them? Or would we want them to do unto us as I am calling on us to do now? From what I can tell from Mark Obenshain's record, he is serving the fossil fuel interests, the Coke Industries, Dominion Power, the coal companies, at the expense of our future and of our grandchildren's future. Another clue as to who Mark Obenshain is serving can be seen in the last election. The Koch brothers gave Mark Obenshain $60,000 in that last election. $60,000. Now the Koch brothers are well known for their efforts to misinform the public when it comes to the dangers of climate change. The Koch brothers have made every effort to block responsible action to deal with the climate crisis. Because why would they do that? They want us to stay addicted to the product that these billionaires are selling. Well, what would the golden rule have us do? Would the golden rule have us support Mark Obenshain, whom the Koch brothers have identified as their guy to advance their agenda? Would the golden rule have us re-elect a state senator who has opposed incentives for fossil fuel companies to cut back on the emissions that are destabilizing our climate? Well, to the citizens of this district, I say, if you follow the golden rule with respect to all these innocents who are depending on us to protect them, then it's clear that I am your candidate. All right. Yay. You didn't realize you'd get a standing ovation when you walked in, did you? Not to embarrass you. And I'm not calling on us to make huge sacrifices. It would be a good start if we would simply stop the lying about the climate crisis. Yeah. 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 And second, we need to seize the opportunity that this crisis is offering us. We need to make the necessary transition away from dirty, harmful, toxic fossil fuels to embrace this new energy al alternatives, of re renewable, green energy alternatives. And contrary to what Dominion Power and its buddy Mark Obenshain seem to think, our best future lies not in resisting this change, but in leading it. Now, since when... Since when does America leave it to other countries to create the solutions for our future? And since when does America turn its back on challenges rather than embracing our powerful American ingenuity to deal with crisis? Now, just think of what this nation did when we responded to the great challenge of World War II. We mobilized to meet that challenge. We harnessed our great economy and our national will, and we won that war. And in just a handful of years, through the Manhattan Project, we solved enormous scientific and technological problems to create the atomic bomb. And we prospered. Well, now our way forward is being blocked by the big money interests that do not want our nation to adjust to these new realities. And our way forward is being blocked by politicians like Mark Obenshain, who are willing to help these big fossil fuel interests, even if it means sacrificing our future and our grandchildren for short-term profits. Well, isn't it time that we get rid of such politicians and elect leaders who care about more than their own short-term gain? Yeah. And isn't it time that we
we elect leaders who will act out of love for all of these innocents who are so dependent on us to protect them. And isn't it time to replace Mark Obenshain with me as the senator 